If you're looking for the rest of the videos in this series, please go to elithecomputerguy.com to see my full catalog of videos. Welcome back. And so today's video, we're going to do what everybody wants to do when they first start playing with the Arduino. We're going to make our first little autonomous vehicle. Vroom, 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 vroom. Again, what I find, whether you're five years old or 45 years old, making vehicles drive around is just the coolest thing. Uh, so I built this very basic little Arduino vehicle. Uh, we're using the Arduino Uno board here. We're using a single infrared sensor in the front. We're using our little two-channel controller down here from Fitec, and we are able to power this thing simply using a little USB battery pack. And with that, we get a nice little compact autonomous vehicle. We set it down and it goes, basically what happens, uh, as soon as it gets near an obstacle, it will then turn and keep turning until it turns away from the obstacle and go around and around and around and around and around. Now, to be clear, this is a very basic autonomous vehicle, but hey, but hey, we're finally getting to actually using motors, using sensors, and creating something that drives around on its own. So that's always a cool thing. So with that, let's go over to the workbench so I can show you the components that are used in order to build this vehicle. And then I will show you the code, uh, and then I'll demonstrate uh, for you how this thing actually works. So here are the functional components for this particular project. I'm not going to show you every specific jumper wire that you're going to need. If you're going to be doing these projects, you should have just a pile of jumper wires. And then part of the fun is you figuring out exactly how to do this. But I am going to show you the functional parts, the parts that you really need uh, in order to make this project work to make sure you have those before you start. Now, the first thing that I'm using is, again, I personally like the little Fitec uh, vehicle platform. This is what I use for a lot of my projects. And so I am using the Fitec platform. The Fitec platform, again, comes with this little uh, two-channel SM controller. So what this does is that it makes the electric motors appear to be continuous servo motors as far as the, uh, the Arduino board is concerned. And so we'll interact with the motors as if they're continuous servo motors. Um, I just like this because it's a very low power, very easy to use, and again, very small. So we have the vehicle platform here. Again, we're going to be using a two-channel controller like we do in a lot of projects and of course with this particular kit we get the small motors and we get those large wheels so those are kind of the standard things that we have in a lot of these uh, vehicle projects then of course we're going to be using an Arduino Uno board as with many things you could use a different board uh, a mega board or so on and so forth but for us in this project we're just going to be using a standard Uno board um, one of the things that we're going to be doing is we're going to be using one of these little mini or micro breadboards we use these micro breadboards in order to basically be able to split the power supply. So we're going to need the five volt power going to a number of different sources. So this way we can plug the five port uh, power here and then basically be able to split off the five volt power uh, to the sensor and to the motors, right? So that's just a little way that we can split the, uh, the, the power off. Uh, and then we have the infrared uh, sensor here. And so we're using a single infrared sensor. So this is one of the three prong infrared sensors. If you go to uh, Amazon or such, you can buy these for a couple bucks a piece. Uh, with this infrared sensor, what you have is you have voltage in, you have VCC in on this pin, you have ground on the middle pin, and you have signal out uh, on the final pin here. So basically what you do is you feed this thing power, and then when it detects something too close to it, it then sends a signal out on the, uh, the, the signal pin, and that goes to the Arduino board, and then the Arduino board processes that and, and, and figures out what to do. Of course, we have the, uh, the USB battery pack here, again, in order to power these vehicles. This will be something that you need if you're gonna make this vehicle autonomous. So with all that out of the way, this ends up being what the vehicle looks like when you actually build this thing. Again, when you're looking at this, uh, you're gonna need some spacers, you're going to need some screws, that type of thing, put all this stuff together. But again, at this point, that should all be in your kit. So what I've done is I've secured the Arduino board to the top of this vehicle. I've actually screwed it down. I've secured the infrared sensor to the front of the vehicle. And of course, I've secured the motor controller to the bottom of the vehicle. Then all we do here is we just have to power everything up uh, and, and connect the 
the uh, the controller wires. Uh, so what we have here is we have the signal wire. So the signal wire is this white wire. Uh, this is for the infrared sensor, and that's going over here uh, to digital port seven on the board. Then of course we also need to be able to control the wheels uh, separately. So we have the control wires for the wheels down here. Those then come up, they go to port uh, eight and to port nine on the board. And so port eight and nine will control the wheels. Uh, port seven will be able to bring the signal in from the infrared sensor. Then all we have to do is power everything up. So since we have two ground connectors, we have two ground connectors on the Arduino board itself, I've connected one ground to the sensor and I've connected the other ground uh, to the controller. So that then gives ground uh, for both of the things uh, that we're dealing with here. Uh, but the, the issue is, is in order to deal with power, so we need five volt power. We need five volt power for the sensor and we need five volt power uh, for the controller. But five volt, you only get one port. You only get a single port on the Arduino board. So what we do is we bring the five volt power to this little micro breadboard. Then we take five volt power, we send it to the controller in the bottom, and we send five volt power over to the infrared sensor. And that gives you a basic over idea, uh, overall idea of how you're going to build this vehicle. Past that, all you do again is to take your little battery here, one of the things I like about the FeeTech is I just shove it underneath, I then plug it in, and away it goes. So with that, let's go over and take a look at the code so you can see how the code works for this particular project. So here is the very simple sketch for this particular project. As you can see, there really is not a whole lot to it. Even as long as this is, a lot of that is just blank spaces that I left here so that you would be able to read this code a little bit easier. Uh, so if we start, we take a look at it. The first thing that we need to do is we need to include the servo library. Again, that two channel controller makes the motors appear to be continuous servos as far as the Arduino board is concerned. And so we need the library so the Arduino knows how to control those servo motors. So the first thing we do is pound include servo.h. The next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to do, need to define the infrared sensor pen, right? So we're going to do uh, pound define, then we're going to call, essentially we're going to call digital pin seven IR. So when we're going to reference a digital pin seven within the sketch, we are now going to call it IR. We then also now need to do define uh, both motors. So you have the left motor and the right motor. Again, they are seen as continuous servo motors as far as the Arduino is concerned. So we're going to say servo. So we're going to create a servo and we're going to call it L servo. So left servo. We're going to create another servo. And we're going to call it R servo. So that'll be the right servo. The final thing that we're going to do in this setup is we're going to create an integer. We're going to create a variable called obstacle. So basically what we're going to do in this sketch is if obstacle equals true, then we want the vehicle to turn. If obstacle equals false, then we want the vehicle to go forward. So in order to do that, we actually have to create the variable up here when we're setting everything. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go down to void setup. So we're going to create the environment that the code will be running in, the loop will be running in. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do pin mode. So this is a function that sets the mode of a digital pin. A pin can be, a digital pin can either be input or output. You actually have to tell the Arduino what you're going to be doing with the pin. So what we do is we say pin IR, so that means pin seven and we're going to set it to input, right? Because basically we're going to be reading from that pen. So we set it to input. The next thing that we're going to do is we created the motors up here. Now we actually have to attach them to the board. So the, the Arduino knows where they're connected to on the board. So what we do is we say L servo dot attach, and then we attach L servo to eight, digital pin eight. R servo dot attach, and we attach it to digital pin nine. And so this is how we set up the environment and everything for this code to be able to run. So we go down here to the void loop. Again, it's important to understand what's going to happen is it's going to loop, 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 it just continuously loops. And so what we have here is we have obstacle. So we created the variable up here, obstacle. And so we're going to say obstacle equals digital read. So digital read is a function. And so it's going to read uh, what's coming in through the IR pin, what's coming in through pin seven. If obstacle equals low, 
So basically what this means is if the obstacle is actually, if it's detecting something. So with this, it's actually, if it's low, it's detecting something. What we're going to do is we are going to turn the wheels. So obstacle equals low, we are going to turn. Else, if obstacle does not equal low, then we are going to move forward at a speed of 80. We are then going to set a delay. Again, this is a loop. It just continuously loops. So we say, how long do we want the vehicle to deal with a command um, before it goes through the loop again? And we set this to 100 milliseconds. Now, it's important here when you're looking at this delay, when you're dealing with autonomous vehicles, delay really starts to matter. The longer the delay, remember, if you set this to 1,000 milliseconds, that means it'll keep doing whatever it's doing for a full second. So think about that as a vehicle. If you give it a command and tell it to do something for a full second, it's most, li it's most likely going to start running over things and not acting uh, the way you want it to. So by setting this all the way down to 100 milliseconds, so that's a tenth of a second, it means it'll keep looping through this loop rather quickly, so it should perform relatively well. So this is all there is to the code. All you do from here is you upload it, and then when you upload it, you can take it over to the, uh, to the little area that we've created and see if this thing will actually move around on its own. So here we have my little, my little test area, put up a couple of boards in a square formation. And so hopefully the vehicle will be able to go into this area and it will be able to move around on its own and it won't get stuck. So all you do is you have the vehicle as you've built it, you take the little USB power supply, you just literally just plug this thing in and then you set it down and let it go. Isn't this exciting? <laughs> Yep, see, and it turns, and it turns. And so now you can see basically when the infrared sensor is detecting an obstacle, it automatically turns for you. And that's basically what you get at this point. And so there you go, there you go. You have an obstacle avoidance robot. Again, this is with a single sensor. We will do another project where I add an array of sensors and so, because that's one thing you have to think about, is it can only respond, see how it's kind of getting stuck down there? It can only respond when the sensor detects an obstacle. So, if the Arduino vehicle hits, hits something, um, and the sensor isn't actually detecting anything, then it doesn't know what to do, and basically keeps, see, see what it's doing right there? Because the, because the obstacle is outside of where that sensor can detect, it doesn't know what to do. So that's one of the problems with a single infrared sensor, and that's why we'll do a project where we actually do an array of multiple infrared sensors in order to keep that problem from happening. So that's all there is to building your own autonomous infrared obstacle avoidance vehicle. You too are on your way to start competing with Elon Musk and Tesla. With, you know, just, just a couple, just a couple of functional additions. But this goes to show you that even creating something like an autonomous vehicle is shockingly simple. Again, a single sensor, an Arduino board, you got the motors, the motor controller, and whatever that is, 15 or 20 lines of code, and, and you have something that is literally running autonomously. From this point, what you would then do is you'll start adding sensors, you'll start adding functions, you'll start adding capabilities and building on top of this to create something that might actually be practical in the real world. Again, one of the problems that you'll see with this is since it has a single infrared sensor, if the, if the vehicle hits an object at an angle where the infrared sensor does not detect the object, then the vehicle will just keep going forward. It'll keep doing uh, whatever that if else statement has told it to do. And so that's why it's important that you start doing things like start adding multiple uh, infrared sensors because then you'll have an array of sensors and then all those different sensors are bringing in information and then you can create if else statements based off of what's coming in from all those sensors versus a single sensor. And so this is where I want to show you how that's how you kind of, you kind of build on these projects. So you create a vehicle, you add one infrared sensor, 
then 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 you see it, then you see it slamming up against the wall and not knowing what to do. And that's where you go, okay, well then I need to then I need to add some side infrared sensors. And then once you add some side infrared sensors, then you realize, well, you know, if it could see objects further in the different in the distance before it actually hits them, that would be beneficial. And that's where you might do something like then you start to add what are called ultrasonic distance sensors. So ultrasonic distance sensors can actually read a distance somewhere up to like 20 feet or something like that. And so you can start you can start telling the vehicle if you see an object a foot in front of you, then start maneuvering. And if the infrared sensors then detect something that's way too close, then do something a little bit more dramatic, right? That's, that's how you can start adding all of these sensors together in order to create a much more sophisticated vehicle. But right here, right now, this is a basic infrared obstacle avoidance vehicle for you. So go take a look at it play with it. Again, if you're going to be using a motor controller other than this particular motor controller, uh, the same basic uh, instructions apply where you add the infrared control, uh, the, the infrared sensor, you detect from the infrared sensor. The only difference is you would put in the commands that are required for a motor shield or whatever else you're, you're doing. So you would just go in and you would edit that part of the code. Whatever the motor part of the code is, that's what you would edit. Uh, but otherwise, it would be relatively the same. So, as always, I enjoy doing this video and look forward to seeing you in the next one. Please go to elithecomputerguy.com and failednormal.com to see the videos that are too dangerous for YouTube.